want to green your scene with a quick recycle, right? I have a riddle. What is something you can do with an aluminum can that you can also do with a plastic cup and a plastic water bottle? And the answer is neither drink out of them or throw them away. We're going to take some and make them look a little like this. Fun, huh? Let's do it. Find yourself a can. Seeing as I collect some odd energy drink cans, I chose this one. Any can will do, but I opted for a taller one. Rinse out your can and cut the top off with a pair of industrial scissors. Slice it down into four sections. Have those quarters into eighths. The paper towel catches any leftover water. While your eighths are still easy to work with, use your regular scissors and snip off the haggard edges at an even point on each strip. I tend to cut at the bend of the can. Even all of your slices to the bottom of the can at a similar point also. The edge of the ink works, or the bend of the can. And watch out for these little shards of evil that threaten to puncture your fragile epidermis. Cheeky little pain-inducing buggers. Next, have all of your eighths into sixteenths. You could make do with sixteen strips, or you can keep going. And the inside should be dry by now. Have all of your sixteenths into thirty seconds. As you cut down the can, make sure you're ending at the same point at the bottom of the can or else it'll look odd. And you'll end up with something like this. Gorgeous. Now you can pull out a pair of pliers. Or, if you don't have any, you can use a clothespin. Bend each strip of the can down. But let me clarify. The fold should hide the ink on the outside of the can. This part is tricky because your can will become very disobedient and willful, and it's hard to describe. Holding the can in front of you, Hold one strip between your thumb and forefinger with your thumbnail toward you. Turn the strip so your thumb faces down. Then twist it so your thumb faces the can. Hook it behind any of the strips it seems to be floating towards. Mine is about five strips away from the original, but it can really depend on how tall your can is and also the width of the strips. Do this loop and hook with the next strip to the right. Hook it on to the very next strip to the right of where the first was hooked. Keep going until you reach the end. But pay attention, because you could possibly miss a strip and have to take it apart and go back. Also, watch out for your strips because too late I realized one was broken. In the end, you'll wind up with something like this. It's not my best work, seeing as one of the strips broke and the poor thing is uneven, but it's the basic idea. I much more prefer this one made of a tall iced tea can. You know which ones I'm talking about. And yeah, that mat underneath is made of duct tape. Now then, if you're working with something made of plastic, obviously too fragile to withstand that bend we made with the pliers. Cutting it makes the edges more coarse than aluminum, so you can just loop and tuck instead of bending it. Also, the length of each slice should only extend to the ridge just before the bottom of the cup. This is a plastic cup. The strips are 16, and it's being used for something already. This plastic cup is slit into 30 seconds. Although the strips on this cup are all the same width, you can improvise. This red plastic cup is cut into 30 seconds too, but with alternating widths. It gives it more dimension, or something artistic I should say. And this one is my favorite, and the only one my mother didn't condemn to my computer desk, because it sits proudly in the living room. It's a plastic water bottle. The only way to see how positively sweet this thing looks is to make one yourself. And remember, on a plastic water bottle, don't cut all the strips all the way down to the bottom. And when you finish it, it will definitely be a pretty cool piece of art. So put stuff in it. Poke a hole in the bottom. Hang it up. Use it as a voter holder. Whatever. Don't Just don't look at that drinking container the same. Huh?